Hey YouTube, Coppersan here. The big summer update is almost over and things are going to cool off a bit before the big winter update with six job and everything will be released. Which means that there is plenty of time to kill to perhaps complete some content outside of the regular meta. And that's where most of the tips and tricks in this video will be about. Content that isn't really in the meta anymore or just simply forgotten content can sometimes still be usable to get additional items and equipments to boost your stats or to anvil. In this video I'll be giving you some tips and pointers on how to get cash items with stats, free pets, special old school gear, titles, stronger projectiles, you name it. None of these will be game changing for you, but it still could provide some benefits. So without further ado, let's get going. So for this video, I started looking into all the old school and dead content to figure out there actually is still something that was useful out there that Maplus just kind of forgot about. And that's when I rediscovered Ghost Park. This content is completely abandoned, which is perfect for our first little scheme. In normal Ghost Park, you'll have to survive an onslaught of ghosts, which you can buff up before entering the map, or you can place debuffs on yourself. And the more you do that, the more you add, the greater the rewards will be. Inside Ghost Park, you can also find special pocket slot items, which are these charms. They give some additional stats, but that ain't really the reason why we're here. Ghost Park also has a ranked mode, and reaching the top rank rewards a special effect, a chair, and a title. All time limited, but a title does give 7 attack and magic attack, 15 all stats, 750 HP and MP, and 5% boss damage. This title is pretty neat for Maplers who do not have a title yet, and with absolutely no one completing this content, there is no competition in Ghost Park whatsoever. Just entering ranked mode and dying almost instantly was enough to reach rank 1 because simply no one is doing this. You can repeat this on any of your boss mules to get a free title every week to give yourself a small stat boost to help defeat those boss monsters. Our next destination is Zipangu. Have you ever visited the ninja castle? The weapon seller in this area sells a bunch of very unique items. Like this flaming katana, the purple tube and aluminium bat to name a few. These unique items are great to anvil over your regular gear to spice things up a little bit. This area also is the home to a special boss fight. To get to this toad boss you first have to go through a series of puzzles and I added a guide in the description if you want to try it out. It's a lot easier to follow with the guide and you should be in and out in like a few minutes. Also fun fact, I found a blue bamboo hat from one of the monsters here and these monsters were missed when updating their drop tables for reboot. In reboot monsters only drop gear that you can actually wear but that's not the case for these monsters over here. I found a fan for Kana for example. But the main reason why we're here is for this boss fight. The fight itself is a complete joke, so no worries unless you're like really unfunded and lower level. This boss can drop a pet, just like Hilla, which is a little toad pet, so you can use that in case you don't have any or didn't get any from last week's Sunny Sunday event. Sadly though, I didn't have any luck this time. We did get an old school elemental staff though, which is pretty cool. Besides all of that, this boss will also drop golden toads. You need to collect quite a few, because then you can exchange those for cash items that give stats. These items are not permanent, but will give a few stats. They have a 90 day duration, which is pretty neat. Especially for some classes like Angelic Buster, who can wear two sets of clothing at the same time. So you can still wear your normal cash gear, but also get these bonus stats. Oh, and by the way, some monsters like this one in Edelstein also drop the blue bamboo hat if you're looking for one. Some monsters in the game can still drop unique items if you're looking for something to anvil. Another, but a bit more common piece of content is Shanghai. This area can be accessed through Six Pet Crossway. Here you need to start the quest line, talk to this NPC over here and then start hunting monsters. The monsters in this area have a chance to drop three unique totems. They have better stats than the Aftalan totems, but there is a catch, they're not permanent. So you have to get new ones every 30 days. If you plan to go for those, make sure to use one of those Legion store drop coupons to speed up the process. And for some reason I was pretty lucky in the shopping center map getting multiple totems in just a few minutes. I just need to get that golden incense burner to complete the set. The set effect is pretty nice as well. And that ain't all, this area also has a wanted board where you can complete daily quests for coins. These coins you can use at this fortune teller here once a day to get a random buff. Those can be pretty good, like an EXP buff, an attack buff or even a meso drop buff. It will cost you one coin though, the buff itself will last for 30 minutes. The remaining coins you can use to get a bunch of special items from these two stores that only appear between 6pm and 2am pacific time. 
Most items are pretty useless, but there are some nice items available if you're looking for a more unique look. And the mastery books are in there as well for some reason. If you don't like what's being sold in the store, you can change channels to refresh it, as every channel has their own unique store with unique wares for some reason. The next tip is for all your projectile classes. If you want to get slightly stronger for bow and crossbow users, get smithing and then create your own titanium arrows. Thanks to the remastered soul arrow skill, you no longer consume arrows anyway, so you only need to make this item once to get the full attack buff. The crossbow recipe drops from these monsters according to the wiki, and the bow ones are dropped by these three monsters. But if you think that's already too much work for you, you can also just craft sharp arrows which give 7 attack and are a lot easier to get. For classes with bullets, you'll need to complete a quest line to get the best bullet. Go to Shoa and start Graco's request, and then complete all the quests all the way until you get the marble gifts from Graco quest. Once this quest is completed, once a day you can get a random buff from her, but there is one special buff. Receive that one to get an achievement, and then this achievement rewards the best bullets in the game, the gloss marble, which gives 25 attack. Attack. The thing is though, you can only obtain this achievement once and the bullets are untradeable, so if you don't get them on the right character, you can never get them again on the same server. For the throwing star classes, I am so sorry, but the best stars are obtained from the stores in the Phantom Forest. Getting them is a pain and requires you to do a lot of dailies in this area. It's a very unique area, but many maples will not find it very fun. You can also get a ton of fun items from the stores by the way. And speaking of this NLC area, if you want to get a high stat medal that is pretty easy to get, complete the Mysteria Epic for this great medal. And a free Android as well. The Mysteria Epic does have some uh, pacing issues, so it's not the greatest theme dungeon out there, but it's a nice and easy to get medal, especially if you have some time to kill. Also for dual bladers, you can do the Commercy Forges to get the best Katara, and this one I believe gives a bit more boss damage. So now for the next one, this is a bit of a stretch, but hey, if you like to do PQs, make sure to complete the weekly Crossworld PQ. Completing this one only takes a few minutes, and here you can get a 10% EXP buff that only works when hunting in a party. Just create a party and boom, you're good. Not the best, but hey, it's a benefit for a grinding class you don't like, as it stacks with other buffs. But yeah, you need to PQ a couple of times for it. I got like 10 coins, I believe, from one PQ. So yeah, it's a bit of a stretch, I admit. <laughs> but still, you know, more EXP buffs are always nice. My final tip is an easy and a bit more well-known one. If you want to speed up your apps to lab progress, you can complete your scrapyard and demon camp weeklies on multiple characters, then feed all those rewards into one character to speed up your process. You can just transfer them through the storage, which is pretty nice. And that's all I had for today. Got any fun or off-meta tips yourself? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, special thanks to our members for making these videos possible. Special thanks to Niels de Konik, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Jesus Rodriguez, Claudie Mora, Wiley, Riser Aryu, Backspace OTI, Ziggy Deer, History Cannon, Sophronix, Flidiot, Knifesu, Cloudfix, Sir Tito655, Michael Manchaka, Raytheus, Afterlord, Betrayal1489, Silvio Nato, Striker Elk, Tidal One Pun, Victor Sundstrom, Matthias Simonsen, Mr. Anark, Benon Games, The Passenger, Kani Wu, Max Bernhardt, Mukao1017, BMB King, Scotty Flies Fast, Gabriel Eck, Fecko, Vake Botnet, Dante Victory, Matinu Death, Snack HBG, Only, Lord Fazil, Pats D. Kaiser, That Archie Guy, Louis Bento Brandao, Snufflepop, Tails Curspet, The Wolf Drake, Gaber Wolf, Premic Bang, Best Guild Luna, Casual Volk, Quinn, Migu, and Mark Sette. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling.